Hi everyone, welcome to this week's episode of the Sunday Art Show. This week I'm going to be working on a painting of some sheep and lambs and I'm going to be painting in a impressionist style, so using lots of textural brushwork and patches of light and dark and colour. So I am posting a little bit later than normal today. Um, that's actually because I was up in London for the last couple of days and actually took a visit and tour around part of Buckingham Palace. Uh, the first time I'd done that and it was actually really, really cool, much, much better than I expected, in part because the artwork on display there by artists like uh, Van Dyck and Canaletto uh, and many, many others, um, just absolutely incredible. Um, you're not allowed to take pictures while you're inside the palace, but if you ever get the chance to go, um, then it really is well worth a look for the artwork alone. I mean, of course, the architecture and the rooms and everything are amazing as well. There's lots of good stuff there, uh, but the artwork really, really uh, struck me. Anyway, uh, today I've started out with you know, as I often do with a watercolour marker using the Prussian blue. And you can see that I've just popped in the outline of a sheep, kind of uh, just below the midline vertically and then left of centre as well uh, on the horizontal. So keeping things fairly loose at this stage as usual, and as much as I enjoy all stages of a painting, I think this is perhaps my favourite way you're just uh, popping in the line work right at the beginning. Very, you can just let your hand wander, be free, loose, expressive, and you, know, you don't know what's going to happen next either. So, you know, lots of possibilities. So we've got a second sheet taking form now, set a little bit further back than the first one. And then just to the left of that sheet, you can see the beginnings of the head of a little lamb appearing. And now I'm working on the body. So right at the beginning, I'm trying to create a sense of, of depth. You can see that the first sheep is by far the biggest. The second sheep is smaller. And then obviously the lamb is going to be smaller than the adult sheep. But already positioning those three animals in the way I have, there's a little bit of a sense of perspective now as things move away from us as we go from right to left. And those long lines I've just put in are an indication of the cast shadows on the ground. So a quick, not really a, a horizon line, but just sort of a line of the field where the, perhaps the ground is undulating. And next, the introduction of a fourth sheep. So when I'm positioning groups of animals on the page, I try to play around with, with the arrangement. So the first three are quite separate from each other. You know, there are clear gaps between them. So this next one is you know, partially obscured by the first sheep. I tried, you know, while I'd certainly like to uh, recreate the arrangements of animals, you know, cows are sheep because they're, they're herd or flock animals. The way they relate to each other in terms of the way they stand, their posture, their positions in the field, you know, it's constantly changing. And it kind of gives you some information about how the animals are feeling as well. You know, cows, for example, will often shelter behind one another as you approach. And that makes for some really in interesting shapes from the artist's point of view. Um, but I try not to make things look too posed. So I, I want to, you know, I want to try and create an arrangement which works artistically, but also a feeling that you could have just happened upon this scene as well. So there's a second little lamb that I just created and that one's grazing away. So head down on the ground. And then now I am putting in a horizon line. And that time jump wasn't deliberate. I actually uh, forgot to set record on the camera. So apologies for that. So you can see I've added a uh, a big fluffy sheep, bottom right, another lamb to the left of, of that sheep. And then I put a, uh, yet another lamb in the bottom left hand corner, but I decided that that was overcrowding things a little. 
So that's why you just saw me go over that bottom left hand lamb with a, a clean wet brush. Because I'm using a watercolour pen, I can smear and, you know, remove much of that outline and I'll paint over that with acrylic in a bit. So another horizon line now, but this time the tree line. And the idea of putting the, the, the big fluffy sheep in the right hand bottom corner is, uh, you know, as, I, as I mentioned a moment ago, I don't want things to look too staged. So the idea is perhaps that, you know, perhaps I'm sort of set up to paint this scene, although I'm working at home at the moment. But imagine, I, you know, I was out in the field and then I've got my scene set up and, and then you know, an animal just wanders in from the right hand edge of the painting. You know, and, and that's what happens. Let's face it, you know, they, they don't they don't stand still for very long. So I'm coming in with some uh, Atelier Interactive Acrylic, as usual, using some titanium white and just putting in some horizontal brush strokes across the lower part of the upper half of the painting. And you can see that that's smeared some of the uh, the outline work of the sheep. And that's still on my brush now. Although I've probably added a bit of slurry and blue acrylic as well. And, and that's fine. I don't, I don't want to remove those initial lines completely, but if some of them smear a bit into the background, then I'm quite happy to explore those haphazard and random spontaneous effects. And now I'm keeping going with the blue, but I'm using the brush in a very different way. So when I put the sky in, horizontal continuous brush strokes, but now I'm just tapping the brush bristles onto the paper or short brisk upward strokes to simulate the texture of distant foliage. And the paint on the brush isn't too thoroughly mixed. So some, some parts of the brush you'll see on that upper edge and down near the, the metal, it's almost pure white still. Other parts will be more blue. And by having that mix of different colors and strengths on the brush, then I'll automatically get some variation in, in color. So now we've got a much better angle on the on the painting than I had before. And I'm coming in with more of a grey mix now. So I've added just a touch of burnt umber to the colour combinations that I had before. And you can see I'm using a range of different angles for the brush. I'm rolling the brush. I'll do short upward brush strokes. And notice that I'm often working against the grain, if you like, against the bristles. So that gives a, a jagged and random edge. So on the right hand side here, you can see that I've got a nice jagged edge on the top of this grey area of tone. And this is really, for the most part, the style of painting I'm going to be doing for this entire uh, picture. The sheep themselves are very textured. The distant foliage is very textured. Um, and so I'm going to kind of mimic the style I'm using on the trees when I paint the sheep, for the most part, not, not entirely. And then in the same way I used smooth brush strokes for the sky, I'll do something similar for the most part for the field. So we have two distinct types of textures being used. Now I've added a little bit of cad yellow to my grey blue mix, so that's bringing in some pale greens now. So this is a really nice quick way to explore different textures, cover quite a substantial area of the paper, and also get some automatic colour mixture, uh, colour mixing in as well, as well as getting the changes in texture and stuff. So with more or less the same colour that I had on the brush, you can see that I just gave the the paper, which is the Dallarowney mixed media paper that I often use, a quick spray with water just to, to moisten the surface. And then I'm dragging my brush in long continuous brush strokes across the surface of the field. And because I've got that mix of colours on the paint, so that mix of colours on the brush, and I'm putting the brush, different sides of the brush down, and uh, the brush is sort of running dry in places, then that automatically creates some variation in texture and light and dark 
across the surface of the field. So we don't really want a solid block of one colour when we're painting organic things, gen generally speaking anyway. Now I'm returning to the, the brush strokes of the type I used for the distant trees, but you can see I'm putting the paint on rather more thickly so that we're covering more. The colour is brighter, so that tends to bring things more to the foreground. And it's also a warmer colour as well, so it's more of a yellowy green now, as opposed to the very cool browny green that I used for the distant trees. And again, I've got a mix of colours on my brush, so you can see I had a little burst of white there coming off the brush. Some areas going down will be almost pure yellow, and other areas will mix with the blue watercolour line that I've put down, so that, that'll introduce little bursts of green as well. So we've now very quickly established a sense of depth because we've got strong warm colours in the bottom left foreground and then the more distant field is treated with a different kind of brush stroke. The paint has been put on rather more thinly so, and the colours there are paler and closer to being you know, monochrome really. Uh, and then the distant trees are very loosely sketched in. So having done all of that, what, what I'm working on now are the sheep. So we'll start with this main sheep. And I'm going in with burnt umber here. I've switched to a smaller brush. It's still a flat brush. The flat brushes I find to be the most adaptable in terms of the types of mark you can make with a single brush. And in line with the idea of painting in an impressionist style, I am picking out the just shapes really of darkness, shapes of shadow. Now, obviously, some of that background work that I did is showing through within the outline of the sheep. Um, but that's nothing to be concerned about. Much of that will be covered up um, you know, later on. And if not, then you know, there might be some interesting effects further down the road. We'll, we'll see what happens. I was saying earlier that I went to London recently and saw some amazing artwork, absolutely incredible artwork actually. Um, but perhaps in complete contrast to that environment, the other week I went to a beach called Bedruthen Steps, which is on the north coast of Cornwall. And uh, that's another location for which I plan to base some future videos around, uh, do some seascape paintings based on the, on the, the, uh, the view there, or the view, different views there. But if you haven't been to Bedruthen Steps, as I say, down in Cornwall, an absolutely amazing location. I mean, just unbelievable, one of a kind. I, I can't get over the fact that this is only the first time I've been there because it's only about an hour and a half from home. Um, and it's just an, an amazing, and amazing beach. You do need to check the tide times uh, because at high tide you cannot access the beach. It's, it's too, you know, it's too dangerous. And they actually have lifeguards who come along and ensure that the beach is clear when high tide is approaching so that people don't get stranded. But the, the cliffs there are about 200 feet high. And then on the beach itself are lots of 200 foot high rock columns. And uh, it really is a surreal, almost science fiction environment. So, um, so as I said, I'm looking forward to showing you some of the footage of that location and then I'm really looking forward to doing some paintings based on that location as well. So one of the things I'm trying to do with the channel at the moment is just keep some uh, some variety going really. So, so I really love painting animals and obviously cows and sheep are two of my favourite subjects but I'm going to be included, continue to include the landscape paintings, the seascape paintings, I'm going to include continue to include the outdoor work that I've been doing where I'm actually painting on location. I really enjoy doing those. Could get a little more tricky as the weather starts to get worse now. Um, we've been having some really heavy rain here in Devon of late, so I'll do my best. You know, I've got quite a lot of footage uh, from the summer months, so that's going to keep me going for a while. But um, we'll, we'll see how it goes. I've got some plans to try and cope with the winter weather, but I haven't tried those out yet. So, so as I said, we'll see, we'll see what happens. Anyway, back to this particular painting, you can see I've given a similar treatment 
to the second sheep and now I'm working on the lamb. Again I'm just blocking in areas of shadow using the burnt umber, keeping the paint fairly thin so that uh, we get some texture in the brushwork and also as I mentioned a moment ago some of the underlying layers of paint showing through. And the little flicks I'm doing now are to depict the cast shadow and give the impression of some blades of grass as well. Oh, the other thing I wanted to tell you as well was that I have uh, finally got myself an Instagram account. Uh, the account name is Art by Mike Jory. So I will be updating that fairly regularly with, um, you know, older works of art, new works of art, work in progress, uh, as well as the animal paintings and landscapes and things that I do on this channel. Uh, I do do other styles as well. So I do work, uh, do some cartoon work, graphic design occasionally. Uh, figure paintings and drawings so I'll be including some of those in the or you know on the Instagram uh, account so if you want to check that out please feel free to follow me um, and I'll follow you back uh, I've only got one thing up at the moment I've literally just got started uh, because before I got into it I wanted to work out how to put stuff up put images up on Instagram from my PC as well as my phone uh, just simply because I've got a ton of files on the computer which aren't on my phone um, and until I was happy with how to transfer from PC direct to Instagram in a few seconds I didn't I didn't want to sort of go through photographing you know hundreds of works of art again so um, anyway I've got that sorted now it's quite easy to do uh, so as I said hopefully be posting fairly regularly back to the current painting though so let's let's stay on the sheep for a little bit so I've now put in some shadow regions on that big fluffy sheep in the bottom right hand corner of the painting and doing the same shadow treatment to the foreground lamb as well. Now you, you'll probably have noticed that you know when I was working on the sheep on the left the paint was quite dark and then for the sheep on the right the far right the paint was quite pale and that's simply the paint running out of my brush. And you can see that I've refreshed the paint, or refreshed the paint on the brush in order to paint the, the knees of the forelegs of that foreground lamb. So, you know, I do like letting the paint on the brush run out because, and kind of make the as much use of that one load of paint as I can. Because it can be a nuisance sometimes if you're trying to cover an area, but in general, I like the textures and the dry brush effect. So. So that's why I do that. On to the, the background lamb now. Sorry, background sheep. Keeping things fairly simple with this one because it's off in the distance. So re really just blocking in the area of shadow and also just correcting the outline of the back a little bit. But taking some care with the directions of my brush strokes though. So I did drag the brush in the direction that the wool was falling on that uh, sheep. But a simple blocking in of the silhouette of the lamb that's grazing made that rear leg too long so I just took off a little bit of paint with my finger there and so by introducing the tone the darker tones on the foreground animals and keeping the background animals the shadows rather paler we're maintaining and slightly enhancing that sense of depth that we talked about before. So we get a sense of depth as mentioned previously with the differences in strengths of colour and tone on the field in the foreground compared to the distant field and the distant trees and similarly the darker shadows on the foreground animals help to bring them forward from both the background and the distant animals. Now I've switched to a small round brush now and I'm applying a colour similar to the, the, the one I used in the, with the sky I think this is actually a mix of titanium white and cobalt blue now. And I'm picking out some of the mid-tones on those two background animals. So again, 
keeping things simple, keeping with the Impressionism style, patches of light and dark. So I'm simply painting the shapes of colour or light that I see. And you can see, I think that's worked quite effectively on that on that background sheep. That's looking quite three dimensional now. So similar treatment on the left hand lap. I try to stay working with as large a brush as possible for as long as possible. But when when the animal I'm painting is as small as the one that I'm working on now, it's it's difficult to do with with a, with a brush much bigger than the little round brush I'm using. So so that's why I've switched to the smaller brush. And you can see I'm using some uh, titanium white now to pick out some highlights on that foreground lamb as well on the left here. So in the same way that the shadows with the foreground animals will generally be darker than the shadows on the background animals, the, the same is true of the highlights, except of course the highlights will be lighter and brighter in general. So I'm just putting some highlights in on that background sheet though. And I'm still keeping and persisting with this patchwork of colours, patchwork of little blocks of light. So the addition of the light there started to lift that background sheep out from the background trees. Coming in now with a pinkier or, or a light pink, I guess, and back to the larger brush. So as soon as I was able to do so, I've switched back to that larger brush now. Now for these foreground animals, the, 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 the first sheep that I drew, the one that's staring right at you, left of centre, I want those animals in that little group to be the main focus of this painting. So although the sheep that I'm working on now, the big fluffy one bottom right, is arguably closer to the viewer, um, I'm going to keep that sheep and the lamb next to it less detailed and less defined than the sheep to the left, because I want them to sort of have a little bit of an out of focus feel so that Perhaps, you know, you, you might not even notice that right hand sheep for you know a fraction of a second when you first look at the painting, because your eye is going to be drawn towards the main focus over on the left hand half of the painting. So that's really one of the you know the, the, the fun things to play around with when you're working away is to you know where are the boundaries between the animal and the the field and the distant trees, do you want a very distinct boundary so that that animal shows out, uh, sh shows up and pops out of the background? Or do you want a less defined boundary so that it, it's almost in camouflage? Even if it's not re really that way in real life, do you want to kind of leave uh, layers and other things for people to discover when they look at the painting? Now this little lamb I'm working on at the moment, putting in the pink highlights again, um, if you look where I placed the, the shadow on the body and, and again where I'm putting the, the highlight paint now on top of the back, you can see that my original blue watercolour marker lines were made the animal's body too long. It wasn't foreshortened enough. And I intend to leave those blue lines in. Uh, and I quite like doing that in much of my work so people can see how I've created the image.
So we're gradually working our way around the entire picture, bringing up the whole painting to a different le to the same level of finish. And so with that in mind, I've now gone over to the, the main sheet and I'm putting in some of that pink colour. Overlaying that over some of the unpainted regions of paper, but also over some of the shadow areas as well, building up the layers gradually. So we're getting a mixing of colour, not only on the palette, where you know you might mix a white and a red to make the pink, but also some optical mixing where you've got a layer of the burnt umber showing through a layer of the pale pink. So we've got three of the animals covered with a layer of pink. Now it's time for the fourth one. So we'll bring up all of those main four foreground animals. I've now got a nice pink overlay. So having done that, now it's time to introduce some, some highlights. So I'm using a light blue, blue here. And because the, the surface of the face of that sheep in the bottom right hand corner is smooth compared to the surface of the wool, I've used, I've patched in the face with a solid area of colour, but I'm using rather a lighter touch to give a more textured finish on the wool. So this painting really is a little bit of a callback to a painting I did back in, I think it was 2010, um, in terms of the style I'm using. So uh, there's a painting of a cow just standing on its own in a field, looking straight out of the canvas that I did called The Courage of Youth. And that's actually the image I use for my little avatar on, on the channel, for example. Um, and that painting was created using very few colours, some gestural line work with a brush and some dry brush painting, basically. And so this is this particular painting is a much more complicated composition because uh, obviously we've got seven animals in the frame and we've got more of a landscape. But um, that was really my inspiration for coming back to this style, really, was the, was the painting The Courage of Youth. And so I thought, well, I'll just I'll just revisit that. Uh, yeah, not not to try and emulate it again, but just to kind of enjoy the experience of painting in that way again. So the lamb in the foreground has got some blue highlights on. So I'm giving the same treatment now to the, the I'm going to call this guy the main sheep again, or the, this girl the main sheep. So again, I've kept, or I'm keeping the, the treatment of the two animals in the bottom right hand corner of frame fairly simple, as I did for the background three animals. But then the other two animals in the foreground, in the mid ground, if you like, including the one I'm working on now, taking a little bit more of a detailed approach. I was talking earlier about uh, how to continue working outside now that winter's coming in and the weather's getting gloomier. Uh, but one of, my, one of my plans for dealing with that, whether I'm working outside or not, but in terms of dealing with the poorer weather, is I want to do more paintings of gloomy days and rainy days, uh, you know, landscapes where it is actually raining or landscapes where it looks like it's about to. Uh, because I've had some good fun recently just painting the view out of the living room window here uh, when it's been chucking down with rain or 
you know, when it's just been really gloomy and really enjoyed playing around with the different tones and colours that you get on those days. And often what one of the uh, sort of accepted problems with painting gloomy views or grey days is that the light can be very flat. So, you know, if you're painting something on a bright sunny day, then obviously that brings out all the colours and you've got very clear contrasts between light and shadow. On a gloomy day, that's not always the case. So you have to work a little bit harder or use your imagination a little bit more to enhance the scene, you know, and, and that can lead to some really interesting creative choices. But I better get back to this painting for the moment because I'm now introducing some highlights on this main sheet. Now, what I've done here is taken a yellow ochre and some pure white, and I've got those on the brush in different areas on the bristles. So when I put the brush down, you can see on the top of the sheep's head there, I've got a little burst of white and a little burst of yellow ochre. So I'm automatically getting that little mix of colours. And that's a really enjoyable way to put down highlights, because when you look at the wool of a sheep, we tend to think of a, of a sheep as being white or black uh, in terms of its fleece. And generally, that's not really the case. When you look at a white sheep, you'll get a lot of colours within that. The very brightest areas will be white but there'll often be areas of off-white or yellowy white. The areas in shadow will have different subtle colours within them. There might be some a little bit of a green hue in there because the, the light has bounced off of the green field and then been reflected up onto the white fleece. Similarly, if you look at the black fleece of an animal, there will often be some orangey-brown in there as well because you know animals are very, very rarely all one colour. You know, even if they're sort of a pedigree dog or something, and it's a you know a beautiful brown colour, even with even then, um, you know, there's always some variation. So the the, the colour combos um, I'm adding now to these two main sheep are beginning to introduce uh, a feeling of warm light. You know, the things were quite subdued up until now in terms of colour and tone. But the introduction of that yellow ochre and the pure titanium white against the blue, against the cooler colours that I've used on the sheep, it really brings out the warmth in those colours. So there's a little bit of a sense of, of heat and sunlight now striking those two main animals. The other thing I enjoy experimenting with is how quickly I paint. So in general, for this particular painting, you can see I'm working really quite slowly. You know, I'm moving my hand and the brush in a fairly slow and considered style. Now, in contrast, you know, there are other videos on the channel where I've, say, painted a cow in 10 minutes flat. So you, you have to work quickly. <laughs> and I guess my natural working speed is generally, generally speaking, um, you know, more towards the fast side. I, I don't normally paint as quickly as I do in those 10 minute videos, but, um, you know, I, I normally work quicker than I am here for this particular one. But again, as well as imitating the style I'd use for the Courage of Youth painting, I also wanted to just take a sort of calm and considered approach for this particular painting. I've been watching some little videos by uh, Simon Davis, who's, I think he's the vice president of the Royal Society of Portrait Painters. And on his Instagram account, he sometimes shows little clips of him painting away. And it just struck me how how slowly he worked. And I don't mean I mean that only as a good thing in that you know, it was very calm and considered. And so I thought, oh, OK, you know, I'll play around with that idea of slowing down a little bit. So I did add some of the yellow ochre colour to the right hand sheep and lamb, but less strongly than I did the other animals. And now I'm, now I'm doing the same thing on some of the blades of grass. So I've been chatting away now for just over half an hour. And I think what I'm going to do for this particular video is uh, I'm just going to shut up for a little bit. So I'm just going to leave you to 
watch the, the rest of the footage, see the painting continue to come to life and, you know, develop. And then what I'll do is I will check back in in around about 15 minutes time and just kind of summarize what I did to, to bring the painting to completion. And as usual, I'll show you the, the uh, high res uh, photograph of the finished work as well. OK, so I'll speak to you in uh, about 15 minutes time.
So here we go, we are coming towards the finishing stages of the painting now. And you can see I've put a little bit more detail on the face of the main sheep and, well, and in fact the foreground sheep and lamb on the bottom right, but not too much, just a few little hints here and there, just given the similar treatment to the sheep on uh, to the left of the one I'm working on at the moment. And I'm currently just enhancing some of the outlines using my small round brush and some ultramarine blue to just lift out the outline of the animal a little bit from the background. But again, I'm keeping in mind this impressionist style that I've been using. So for the most part, I'm using broken line. So little sections of, of dark and a little bit unhappy with the, the mouth of the sheep to the left. So decided to just remove that. Uh, again, one of the, you know, the the massive advantage of the interactive acrylics is you can spray the dry paint with water and then just lift it off or move it around a bit. Coming in with some darker shadows now, again with the line brush, with the round brush, I should say. So I'm just picking out a few details here and there to bring the viewer's focus to this main sheep. So we've got a stronger contrast on this animal, brighter light, darker shadows, more definition, more detail. And the hope being to make this animal the focus of the painting and also bring it forward relative to the other sheep. Just um, refining the outline of the forelegs of that particular sheep there. Same treatment for the rear legs. And in fact, I I'd barely depicted the, 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 the rear leg, which I've just popped in there in shadow. So it can be really easy to miss little details, actually. Um, I think because as artists we tend to look at a scene or a subject and then obviously we have to select which bit we're going to draw first and then which bit we're going to draw next and so on and so on. Sometimes you can become so involved in your painting that you suddenly realise nine tenths of the way in, oh hang on I've, I've missed a leg out, <laughs> so, something like that. Um, because you can sometimes just get a bit too involved in the overall effect. Now what I'm doing here is using the round brush to put down a little bit more um, strength into the cast shadows on the ground. And being completely candid, I'm not sure that was the best decision for this particular painting. And I did debate whether to soften that a bit. Um, but for now, I've decided to leave it. Because uh, I can always come back and, and modify it if I choose to weeks or months later. But if you, sometimes if you're not sure about something, it's a good idea to, to, to not be you know, not be too eager to change it, because sometimes you look back at work months or years later and, and you can think to yourself, oh, hang on, I was on to something there. I'm not, I'm not particularly convinced that I, that I am in this case, but uh, as I say, that's, that's why I'm going to leave it. So now I've gone back to just put a little more definition in on the shape of that face where I'd removed the detailed work from before. Now notice how I mentioned this before, but notice how these foreground sheep on the bottom right of the painting, they almost disappear. Certainly the, the one on the far right almost disappears into the background. And as I said, I quite, I'm quite happy with that. So the traditional approach is to have distant objects be less detailed and foreground objects be more detailed. But I like to play around with that and sometimes have foreground objects, which are, are, are not very detailed either. And, um, so that's why I'm leaving those bottom right animals with a similar treatment to the background animals. I'm currently adding a little bit more dark shadow, dark lines to the left hand uh, of the two main sheep. 
And so this one's getting quite close to completion now. Um, I did debate about putting some more detail into the eyes of the main sheep, but decided to leave that in the end. So just a few few shadows on the on the ground there. And so here is the finished painting. So I'm quite pleased with the way this one turned out, actually. I like the composition I've got here, the arrangement of the animals. I really like the lightness of treatment of the background animals and trees. As I said, I have some reservations about the, the cast shadow for the main sheep, but it does help to bring the focus to that animal. So I think I've got quite an interesting effect here. It's certainly, certainly not photographic. Um, and it, it does go along with the impressionist style that I was you know, hoping to achieve. But it's got a nice sense of light and there's a nice sense of life in it as well, I think. And it also, for me, it's quite an unusual aspect ratio. So it's quite wide and not all that high, which isn't um, the shape of painting I normally do. So, so for all of those reasons, really, I've, I've really enjoyed working on this one. I hope you've enjoyed watching the development of the painting. As always, any questions at all, feel free to ask me in the comments below. Please remember to hit that like button. And if you're new here, then please remember to subscribe to the channel. And once you've hit the subscription button, a little bell pops up. And if you press that, you'll be notified every time that uh, I post a new video. So hope you've really enjoyed watching this video. Thank you very much for doing so. And I look forward to seeing you next Sunday for the next episode of The Sunday Art Show. Thanks again.